Good afternoon, goeiemiddag. Welcome to our Thursday Live. Doesn't matter from where you're watching, whether it's our lovely friends from Australia, from Switzerland, from New Zealand, or my family in South Africa, a warm welcome to all of you. I'm Nadine Fosler, aka, aka Mama Choco, and I'm here today to inspire you Yaku has um, had just had a lovely chuckle about my new hairstyle, but this is actually the only hairstyle that works at the coast. Um, then the wind can blow and anything can happen, um, and I still look, in a way, presentable. Sit back, relax, enjoy. I'm going to inspire you today. We are going to start our creative, inspirational session with something from our Choco book. Our Choco book that we launched um, the end of last year that's filled with inspiration stories, but also something that's very close to my heart and, the and that's the fact that Choco is focused on people, making a difference and sharing inspiration freely. So today we are going to read together the story about Bob and where the color Bob's blue comes from. So here, here comes Bob for you. So Yaku, and that's my husband, grew up around Bob. For many years, Bob was a project foreman at Yaku's family's paint contracting business, and he was also the person with, we, with whom Yaku mixed his very first pot of paint. That was back in 2001. From then on, there was no stopping them. Paint Master was born, and 16 years later, Choco. One of Bob's happiest moments came in 2005, when Yaku took him to see the sea for the first time. His response to that experience inspired Bob's blue. Bob has a place in our hearts forever. And I'm so fortunate to be sitting at the sea and reading this piece of inspiration for you. And the reason why I've in actually decided on this color today was a question that, actually a few questions that we received this week on, is choco food safe? Can I use it as an underplate, as a serving plate for food? And yes, it is. We, in this section of Bob's Blue, we actually did a beautiful snook board um, and plated it beautifully. Today I'm going to show you this ste the st steps of this technique so that you can easily do it at home. And this is also something that I'll be using in our store as serving plates when you come in. And um, when you come and sit down for a cup of coffee and something to eat with us while we inspire you even more. The book is available. Um, inquire from your nearest Choco stockist or you can order it on our, our online store. Okay, so here it comes. How do I do that? So the other question this week, and I decided to do the two together, was a client that asked she has a very damaged, maybe Yaku, you can just put the camera down that there's stability. Thank you. Yaku is the cameraman behind the camera doing all the filming. So he will zoom in from time to time. So two questions arise this week. And please ask those questions because that guides me so that I know what to show you and how to, how to offer some help. The first question was, is choco food safe? And can I use it as serving boards? Yes, we're going to show now. And the other question was a client yesterday that said she has a very damaged um, plywood or pressed wood table. And even if she paints it, the, the surface is so damaged that you actually can't hide the imperfections. This technique will show you how to hide imperfections on a damaged plywood or pressed wood surface and then also to do something maybe smaller like a serving board. Okay, first step, this can, can now be anything. It can be a piece of wood, it can be a piece of melamine. With melamine we will just clean well with lacquer thinners. Raw wood surfaces, no preparation is required. The only thing is make sure it's dust free. Okay, I'm going to lay down 
as choco stencil. These are one of our stencil designs. I still the camera, yeah. These are one of our choco designs, stencil designs, and um, I'm simply going to place it on my board. Scoop some stencil of Paris paste. This is something we also used last week to give a raised effect, but this is a lovely medium to also hide imperfections on a surface instead of just painting solid. So you can secure your stencil with some masking tape. I'm not even going to do that. And I just very e evenly scoop this on my surface. This stencil is also pattern repeat, and I'll show you how to repeat the pattern. It's just important when repeating patterns that you wait for your first application to dry before you start, um, before you start moving the stencil to actually repeat the pattern. Yes, I just make sure I do it evenly. No rights or wrongs. If you lift the stencil and you see that there are anything uneven um, on what you've created, you can always just, once, it's, once it has dried, just sand it a bit to make the application nice and smooth and even. I remove my stencil while still wet. Look how beautiful that is. I'm going to just drag my finger along the edge to remove any excess and now I will wait for my stencil to dry and just see where the pattern repeats put it flat in that area and just repeat the rest of the stencil if anything like the following did occur can you see there's a, spl a sp splotch a mistake I can take the back of an artist brush clean it out you can use something like an earbud or a toothpick as well and if you paint it you won't even notice any imperfections but as I always say anything can be fixed it's just paint it's not supposed to give you stress it's supposed to give you joy and relaxation okay so once this step has been completed I have something here that has already been stenciled and the stencil of Paris is already dry drying time depends on the thickness of application but also what the weather conditions are like if it's for instance a very um, uh, humid cloudy cold day everything takes longer to dry your paint your stencil of Paris you will see everything just then needs more patience I'm now going to use our new color for Loso and I'm so happy to share this color with you today um, this color is named after Comfort's Blue, Comfort, Comfort Blue's daughter so Comfort is our head center and Comfort's daughter is also now working in the factory and her name is for Loso she's lovely and it's so lovely to have a part of the Choco color range as well I'm now painting on top of my already dry stencil of Paris paste. Is there a question? Yaku has a yeah, chuckle. Yaku says it looks so easy. It actually is, Yaku. Tomorrow you're going to paint the entire day to see how easy it is. <laughs> okay, so I'm painting on top of my stenciled surface. Always make sure that you do the edges as well. Yeah, this is very enjoyable. I think I would love to do this. Okay, there are questions about the opening of the store. We hope to start soft trading on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. And then the official launch, everyone, will be on Saturday, the 26th of February. 
So I can't wait to meet all of you in the area. Please come in and say hi. We hope that the coffee ma machine would be in time, else we will just have a delayed coffee gathering, but you need to come and see the store and just come and give a hug. Okay. So that's then step two. Step one was the stenciling. Step two is the painting. Now important, wait for your paint to dry. And then we are going to sand. So I have a board here that has been stenciled with a different design, also a chocolate stencil. I have painted it in coral stone, a different color. And now I'm going to use a hundred grit piece of sandpaper and I'm going to sand and sorry for the noise so this the contrast between the coral stone and the white stencil of Paris is not as big as the contrast between Danny's day and the white stencil work and here we have Godfrey's glimpse so there, the greater the contrast between dark and light, the more noticeable the stencil work will be. But this is beautiful and subtle. Look how beautiful the fine lining looks. There's fine lining with the stencil I've just used, and even that is so beautiful. And all the colors together just spreads a message of happiness. So the paintbrush I used was a Hamilton's Enzyme brush. I'm going to clean it at the back. And then Yaku will just make sure that you can see the description. And then put the camera down that there's stability when you film. Okay, Yaks. So I'm sanding. Until I'm satisfied, Yako, I want you to zoom in on the front of this table. We've done ex the exact same technique over here. And this was actually damaged wood that we repurposed. The only thing that I did there differently is I actually used an electric sander because it's such a large area to sand. Okay, put down the camera. How's it looks like we're on the sea, Yaku? Yeah. Okay, next. So we want to use this as serving boards for cheeses maybe, for your, um, even if you serve like pizza or snacks or whatever. Or you can even use it in a bathroom with a soap and a nice greenery and, uh, and, uh, and a face cloth. I am going to seal it with our clear glaze. Now the clear glaze is something that makes your surface more stain resistant, water resistant and UV resistant. And what I have experienced is that a damp microfiber cloth actually works so well with the application. So what I'm going to do, I don't have measuring cups with me in the store, but I'm going to show you how to tweak the measurements of the glaze. So I'm just going to, I want to manipulate the glaze, the sheen level of the glaze. So the instructions on the lid says, add 30% water, which roughly is three parts glaze and one part water. But I want to have a more of a subtle satin finish. So I'm just going to apply one or mix together, one part glaze and one part cooled down boiling water. Whatever then is left of that mixture, I can put in an airtight container and use later again. So I'm making a little mark on the inside of my polystyrene cup. It can be on the outside with a pen. And I'm adding one part lace to a paper cup, one part cooled boiled water, And I'll be adding two coats of this, just to make sure that I have proper protection on my boards. How I will wash them is I will wash them in soap and water, sunlight liquid, water, and then just dry it immediately because it is wet. I soak my dry microfiber cloth in some water, 
also my not contaminated water, tap water contaminates. I'm going to, I have a bucket next to me. I squeeze out any excess moisture so, so that my cloth is damp but not completely soaking wet. I dip my glaze in my water I dip my microfiber cloth in my glaze and water mix, squeeze out any excess. I have a very little container. Make sure you use something bigger, maybe like an ice cream tub. The glaze is food safe and that's why I'm using it to seal my surface and to make it water resistant and stain resistant. And I wipe it onto my board. Make sure all the grooves and crevices are reached. Here's on the darker board. Here's on my Godfrey's glimpse board. You can wear gloves. Um, just to make sure, just to help actually to clean your hands easier or just rinse your hands immediately in some water once you are done with the application. It creates like a latex film on your hands but it's not dangerous whatsoever, just uncomfortable if you don't wash your hands immediately. And my boards are ready to be used. They're waiting for you to come and visit. Okay, next I'm going to share a creative. Okay, this now I can pour back into an airtight container and use later again. I'm just going to allow my cloth to rest in there. Needs it around me. Just give me a second to create space. Next, I have something creative. So I discovered the most lovely secondhand store in Jeffrey's Bay and I bought these vinyl records from them. Can you remember them? How amazing. I am now going to use this as underplates. Look how beautiful this looks. So there is an underplate with a plate and a spoon. These are for the records that you no longer can listen to. Okay, so relax. We cannot listen to them. They are so badly scratched that no music or noise comes from them, but we're going to re-love them. So I scoop Stencil of Paris, the same product that I've used earlier, from my jar, hold my stencil flat, and I simply spread my paste on top of my vinyl. Who burnt their dinner? There's Michelle. Michelle just notified us that she burnt her dinner. Michelle, luckily you have dinner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so sorry about that. Okay. So I'm not going to do it on the entire surface. I, I'm just going to share some tips. So you just make sure that the application, as in the start, is nicely done, evenly done. I also, if I have like a retro room, I will even put this up on a wall, three vinyl records below each other, maybe with an air plant in a bottle. We have had... Um, um, we've had a dollhouse um, entry last year with a Choco Champs competition. Nini Bub painted that. Can I let you know how it holds up? We will get back to you and ask her. She entered for the 2020 Choco Champs. Let me get back to you and see how it holds up. But look, Yaku, how beautiful that is. So there's your vinyl record and it can be re-loved and reused. Okay, so there's one that was already 
stencil and there's another one so different stencil designs can be used differently i am enjoying the conversation that's happening here i can't see all the comments my husband's asking what he's making for dinner i'm so glad he's asking that question i want a seven course meal please because you forgot to buy me flowers for valentine's day mm -hmm. and then last piece of tip for the week okay bob's blue is like a vibrant blue color and the pigment we use to manufacture bob's blue is a very unique pigment it's actually a powdery pigment which means the color that you see through the glass none of the choco colors actually are exactly the same perceived in the wet form and through glass as it is in the dried painted out form so what we do is we send every stock as paint out cards and brush out cards of what the actual colors look like before you purchase a choco color because now you see the color in its wet form through glass and the color isn't the same when it's dried and painted out okay and with any paint it's like that just most paints comes come in tins or they come in plastic so you can't see the color with choco we try to do everything eco-friendly eco-friendly and we try to make everything upcyclable um, so that's the reason for the glass and the packaging and we do amazing things with the glass bottles we will have a ca campaign about that shortly but this is what Bob's blue looks like when painted out you will also see in the book it's a nice vibrant color but once again when printing colors in print or seeing them on a screen in print you use CMYK codes in on a screen you use um, RGB colors for pigments you we use Pantone codes so there are all different codes and ways of getting to a color that's why I say the best way to know exactly what the color looks like is to ask for your nearest stockers for a brush out card so that you can see what it looks like and for those that are adventurous you would just not care what the color looks like because you will just have fun but we all are different my message for today is i think choco is a family and our customers are no longer customers they are family members and someone that has been in my thoughts tremendously this week is lizette and lizette is a lady that's experiencing some health issues and she's also the person when we did our choco champs videos last year in the potch store she ran into the store she started painting things and helping us to organize things in the store so lizette and there might be other lizettes as well that i don't know by name i'm giving you a very tight hug um, through this phone right now hoping that you would feel better that you will feel inspired and that will you will find new purpose and life my message for this week is give those hugs to those around you that need it um, so that they can feel that that there's someone that cares and that's thinking of them so be kind and um, be the best version of yourself this week and i'm looking forward being back next week giving more inspiration and ask the questions so that i can know what the needs are to to be there to assist love you all stay safe till next week bye